This video covers the basic connection design functionality of SDS2. This is a small, simple model which shows a variety of the connection types that can be designed by SDS2, including sloped and skewed connections. The number of connection types and configurations that SDS2 can handle is quite a bit more extensive than that of any other software. It is very easy to switch between different views of the model. From a plan view, you can switch to an elevation view by simply double-clicking on the corresponding grid bubble. Other software systems may only show a 3D rendering of one connection at a time. With SDS2, you can view the full structure, including connection material. Constructability checks consider all members framing into a joint and nearby connections. With SDS2, you can easily create a model from scratch, or you can import a model. The feature of importing a model is called Design Link. Here we're showing the variety of file types that we're able to import. We also have exporting capabilities called Model Link. Here's a list of the variety of file types that we're able to export. It also works very well to import and export true 3D models to and from Revit. SDS2 offers more connection design code options than any other software. In addition to the current and many past AISC codes, you also can design to Canadian, Australian, and European codes. The next thing we're going to show you is some of the different setup options. As a side note, SDS2 is the only true connection design software. Other systems on the market which claim to be connection design software are instead a connection verification software, where you input all of the information for each of the connections and the software calculates the capacity, similar to a spreadsheet. With SDS2, you input the general criteria and loads or import the loads, and the software runs through the iterations to design all of the connections. We get feedback from many of our new customers that eliminating the trial and error process saves them quite a bit more time than they thought it would. The first thing you do is input your general connection design criteria for the project, and you can carry this information over from project to project. One of the things that you need to set up is the bolting information. What size bolts are you going to use for this project? For most projects, you want to limit the bolts to just two or three different sizes and keep them separated by at least a quarter inch diameter so that the erection crew can easily tell them apart. For this project, we're only using three quarter inch and one inch diameter bolts. Over on the left side, we indicate what size bolts will be used in what situations. Another thing you can do is tell it for beam clip angle connections and for shear tab connections, the minimum number of rows of bolts based on the nominal depth of the beam. This table is currently set up to meet AISC minimum standards. However, you may increase these values if you wish. More setup criteria is under the heading standard fabricator connections. We'll go through a couple of these so that you can get an idea of what you can customize. The first one we'll look at is clip angle setup. The, the standard values are five and a half inch horizontal from bolt to bolt. Or if you have a clip angle connection with a high axial load, you may want to use a narrow gauge, which is currently set to three and a half inches. There are other items you can customize here, such as minimum bolt edge distances. In this table, you set what angle sizes the software will choose from for clip angles and claw angles. This was set up for a particular customer whose standard is four by four by a quarter clip angles. The next item we're going to discuss is auto standard connections. With SDS2, rather than specifying connection type for each connection in the model, you can tell it what type of connection to use based on framing condition. Auto standard connections are divided into four categories, 
beam to beam, beam to column, column to beam, such as a cap plate, and column to column, or column splice. For each of these categories, every possible section type and configuration is listed. We're going to scroll down to the most common configuration, which is wide flange to wide flange into the web perpendicular. Currently, it's set up as a clip angle connection. As you can see, it happens to be a welded, bolted, double clip angle. If you want to change it, you would just double click here and change it to whatever you want. In this case, we're going to change it to a shear tab connection. Then we're going to grab the whole structure, mark all of the members for processing, and reprocess it. As you can see, all of the beam-to-beam -beam connections have been changed to shear tabs. Any one of these can be overridden individually. When you edit an individual member, you will see left end settings and right end settings. When we teach you how to build a model, we teach you to add members from left to right and bottom to top. Or when a model is imported, the left and right ends are assigned based on their corresponding coordinates. If you ever lose track of which end is left end and which end is the right, just hold your cursor over the member and the left end will have a bullseye over it. Double click on the member to edit it. As you can see for the left end shear load, auto is checked. When auto is checked, the load is based on information from the connection design criteria window. The shear load on the beam end connection can be either a percentage of the uniform allowable load or a percentage of the maximum web shear. Also, moment connections can be designed for a percentage of the beam's moment capacity, and brace connections can be designed for a percentage of their tension and or compression capacity. You don't have to edit members one at a time. You can select several beams right click and select edit and set connection loads in multiple members at once. Or if, for instance, you wanted to design the connections for all of the members of a certain size for their worst case load, then you can do that by using the advanced selection feature. In this instance, we're going to design all of our W8x24 vertical brace connections for 75 kips of tension and 50 kips of compression. Next, I'm going to show you how to customize a connection. To do that, you double click on the connection. An annotated diagram of the connection appears along with all of the values associated with it. If you want to lock in or change any of these values, such as gusset plate dimensions, then you can do so here. Then, even if you apply new loads, the connection will be designed around the values that you locked. In this case, we're going to change the number of rows of bolts from two to three. 
we're first going to do it on the claw angle. If you look closely, you'll see that when a value is changed, as soon as you tab out of that field, then the limit state values over on the left-hand side are updated. For instance, as soon as I change the number of rows on the web plate from 2 to 3, the gusset block shear changes from 159.2 to 175.9. So if you're trying to fine-tune a specific limit state value, then you can do it here. We're also going to change the gusset plate thickness from 3 8 inch to 1 half inch. So if you would like to save this connection as a what we call user-defined connection, you can do so by clicking the user-defined connection button. We're going to save this as a new user-defined connection, and you can name it anything you want. Every company seems to have their own naming system for connections. So I'll name this VB T equals 1 half R equals 3. If you want to apply that same connection other places, then you can select the member or members on which you want it applied and for connection type, select user defined connection, then click on the file cabinet to open the library of your user defined connections. Now, if you're like many of our customers, you will develop dozens and dozens of user defined connections. Since this is a brand new model with no information copied over from previous jobs, we only have the one connection to choose from. We select that and the model is automatically updated. Another thing that you can easily do is change the work point on connections. In this case, we have a brace with a shallow slope. So you may want to move the work point in order to get a more compact gusset plate. You do it by first changing the brace to stick form, then select the member end, right click and select move stretch member, select the original work point, then the new work point, then left click to confirm, and as predicted, you get a more compact gusset plate. To look at the connection design calculations, you select reports, then either connection design calculations or expanded calculations. You can either look at the calculations for the full model or for selected members. In this case, we'll only look at expanded calculations for one member. You do this by clicking on the member and hitting enter. The top part of the first page shows general information regarding the connection. Then a little bit lower is specific information regarding bolts, welds, and connecting elements. Then a little further down is a summary list of all of the limit states that were checked, a capacity for each of the limit states, and the AISC reference of where that limit state calculation came from. After that is the controlling capacity of the connection the ratio of required strength to available strength, then a note saying that the connection is okay. Below that are detailed calculations for each of the limit states showing full references, equations, and all of the values used in the equations. If you ever have a question regarding these calculations, please give us a call. Next, we're going to look at this beam to column connection. As you can see, when we place the cursor in the shear load field, it tells us that the capacity of the connection, as it's currently configured, is 95.4 kips. If we increase the shear load to 160 kips, then the beam is not deep enough for the connection and a haunched connection is automatically created.
using a deeper beam might be less expensive than the labor associated with fabricating the haunched connection, if you have that option. Next, we're going to look at a moment connection. Notice that the connection for the beam framing into, into the web of the column is a double clip angle. When designing moment connections, we also look at the column for stiffener and doubler requirements. The capacity of this moment connection is currently 52.5 kip feet. If we increase it to 65 kip feet, then column stiffeners are required. As part of the full joint constructability check, the software realizes that a double clip angle won't work for the beam to column web connection, so it automatically changes it to an extended shear tab. Using a heavier column might be less expensive than the labor associated with adding stiffener plates if you have that option. Finally, we're going to look at beam-to-beam -beam connections framing into opposite sides of a supporting beam. To make things easier to see, we're going to adjust the reference elevation to remove the top flanges from the view. Then we're going to move one of these beams over a couple of inches. As part of the constructability check, SDS2 figures out a way to make the connection work. Those were just a couple of examples of the many constructability checks that SDS2 performs. That was a general overview of the connection design features of SDS2. There are many other connection types and features not shown in this video that may or may not be of interest to you. Please make a list of your questions and contact us so that you can determine whether or not SDS2 can meet your specific needs. Thank you.